Ada Blackjack. Ada Blackjack Johnson was an Inuit native born in Spruce Creek, Alaska. As a girl, she learned Eskimo survival skills such as hunting, skinning, and igloo building. After living in poverty following her father's demise, her mother sent her to a Methodist mission school in Nome, Alaska to learn English and Western traditions. An abusive marriage in her teenage years left her destitute, and she lived in her mother's house with a sickly child whom she eventually placed in a temporary orphanage. Ada promised her son that she would get him back as soon as she made some money and began looking for a job. In 1921, she joined an Arctic expedition led by Canadian explorer Alan Crawford. The journey would take them across the Chukchi Sea over to Russia's Wrangell Island in an attempt to clean the land for Canada. The team included five people, three American men, Crawford and Ada, who was hired as a cook and a seamstress. Ada was always uncertain about the expedition, as she believed the men were inexperienced in traveling under Arctic conditions. However, she needed the money, and the job paid $50 a month. On September 15th, the team landed on Wrangell Island. During the first year, the remote land lived up to their expectations, but as summer came to an end, their rations quickly ran out, and there were not enough cattle to hunt for survival. By 1923, the situation was dire. The crew was starving, and one of the Americans, Lorne Knight, was extremely ill with scurvy. On January 28th, the remaining three men left Ada and Knight behind and attempted to cross the 700-mile trek across the frozen ocean to Siberia for help. Ada and Knight attempted to survive on their own, but six months later he passed away. Ada was now alone with the ship's cat on the frozen land, but the idea of returning to her son inspired her to keep going. Ada then learned how to hunt white foxes and birds for food, built a platform above her shelter to spot approaching polar bears, and even experimented with the crew's photography equipment. Ada was finally rescued on August 20th, 1923, almost two years after arriving on Wrangell Island. Upon her return, she became a local celebrity and was nicknamed the female Robinson Crusoe. However, Ada hated the media circus and only wanted to get her ill son back. She then used all the money she earned from the expedition and took her son to Seattle to treat his tuberculosis. Ada eventually remarried and had another son, then lived a quiet life in the Arctic for the remainder of her life. Alexander Selkirk. Alexander Selkirk was a Scottish privateer and Royal Navy officer born in 1676. Longing for adventure, Selkirk joined a band of buccaneers in the Pacific when he was only 19 years old. By 1703, the 27-year-old was a sailing master in a privateering expedition, but a year later, he had a quarrel with his captain and requested to be put ashore with nothing more than a change of clothes, a musket, a bible, and some tools on the uninhabited Masatiara Island in the Juan Fernandez Island Cluster, 400 miles west of the coast of Chile. Selkirk was convinced that another ship would pass soon, so he sat on the sand and read his bible. But as the days went by and no one showed up, he faced the harsh reality. The young man survived off eating spiny lobsters, wild turnips, feral goats, and rats. He was even able to build two huts out of pepper trees, one for cooking and one for sleeping. During his time on the island, he spotted nearby vessels two times. However, they were both Spanish, and as a Scotsman and a privateer, he would have faced harsh treatment. On February 2nd, 1709, after four years and four months without human contact, Selkirk was finally rescued by a fellow privateering ship, captained by Woods Rogers. The crew was amazed at how relatively healthy and filled with vigor the castaway was. Upon arrival in England, Selkirk's experience drew a lot of attention, and in 1719, when Daniel Defoe published The Life and Surprising Adventures of Robinson Crusoe, many people noticed the resemblance and believed he was the author's primary influence. Marguerite de la Roque In 1542, French explorer Jacques Cartier convinced his 19-year-old niece, aristocrat Marguerite de la Roque, to accompany him on a trip to Newfoundland, Canada. But during the voyage, the young woman fell in love with a fellow crew member. Her uncle was enraged and threw them off the ship, along with her lady's maid. The trio settled on the island of Demons, near Quebec, a remote and cold area populated by bears and wolves. They only had basic supplies, such as muskets, ammunition, and low food rations to survive, and managed to live in their own hand-built shelter by fending off predators with rocks or guns. Their life became even more complicated when Marguerite became pregnant, but eight months after giving birth, her lover and the lady's maid succumbed to illness and malnutrition. 
a heartbroken Marguerite was now completely alone on the island, and spent seven months hunting prey using the remaining ammunition. By 1544, De La Roque was finally rescued by Basque fishermen. Upon returning to France by herself, Marguerite became a local celebrity when her story was published in Eptamegon, a series of 72 stories written by Marguerite de Navarre. In her later years, Marguerite stayed away from the spotlight and started a new life as a schoolmistress in Montreux, France. Her partner's identity always remained a secret as to not taint her family's reputation. Tom Neal Although most castaways dream of returning home as soon as possible, that was not the case with bushcraft and survivalist Tom Neal. Born in New Zealand in 1902, the outdoor enthusiast became enthralled with the island of Anchorage in the Saguaro Atoll in the South Pacific Ocean after hearing about it from a fellow traveler. In 1952, Neal arrived at the island with only two cats, several water tanks, a hut, and a couple of books. Once on the land, he encountered remnants left by World War II coast watchers, such as a boat, feral pigs, and chickens. During his first stay, Neil hunted pigs for food, planted a garden, repaired the ship, and domesticated the chickens. However, after suffering a back injury two years into his adventure, he was forced to return to civilization to receive medical care. While waiting for his back to heal, Neil got married and had two children. But despite now having a family, he returned to the island by himself in 1960 with enough provisions to survive three and a half years. In January of 1964, Neil left the island voluntarily as pearl divers invaded the area and ruined his peace and quiet. Neil's story became known in 1966 when he published his autobiography, An Island to Oneself, the story of six years on a desert island. He then returned for a third and last time to the atoll in 1967, remaining this time for an entire decade. A yacht eventually found him gravely ill and lying on the beach. As he was taken to the hospital, he was diagnosed with a terminal illness and passed away eight months later. Douglas Robertson and Family On January 27, 1971, Scotsman sailor Dougal Robertson, his wife Lynn, daughters Anne and Sandy, and sons Douglas and Neil departed from Cornwall aboard Lucette, a 43-foot wooden vessel that the family purchased with their life savings. The family sailed across the Atlantic for a year and a half, only stopping at Caribbean ports to refuel and gather supplies. During one of these stops in the Bahamas, the eldest daughter, Anne, left the voyage. As the remaining family members traveled through the Panama Canal, the Robertsons hired an inexperienced crew member named Robin Williams to accompany them as they prepared to travel to the Galapagos Islands and beyond. On June 15, 1972, Lucette came under attack by a herd of killer whales and sank 200 miles away from their destination. Luckily, everyone survived and escaped aboard an inflatable life raft and a solid dinghy, but with barely any tools or provisions. Hoping to find drinkable rainwater, the group sailed around using the dinghy as a towboat. But after two weeks, the inflatable raft broke and the entire team relocated into the small dinghy. For over a month, they survived by catching fish and wild turtles, using the wind and current to move towards Central America in hopes of running into a larger vessel. The group was finally rescued by a Japanese fishing trawler that was on her way to the Panama Canal 38 days after the sinking of Lucette. After returning to Europe, Mr. Robertson, who had been keeping a journal during their days at sea, wrote an autobiographical account of the incident in his 1973 book, Survive the Savage Sea. Thank you for watching our Dark 5 video. Please leave a comment below if you have an idea for a future video, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive a notification whenever we post new content.